In this video, we will be writing an algorithm to solve the simulation of the sale of flight tickets. So let's have a look at some detail now. We are going to simulate the sale of some flight tickets for each person, and each person can buy one or more ticket. They will enter the number of tickets needed for that customer. Then they will enter the classification, whether it's a business or an economy classification of ticket. All tickets for this instance of sale must be of the same classification. The program will print the total cost for that customer. The program will then repeat and ask the user to enter the number of passengers in their group. When that user enters a zero, the program will stop the loop and print a grand total of all of the tickets sold during the program execution. The program will be using a pre-written function called flight cost, which has been given to you below in this code here. So before we start writing any kind of code, let's just analyze the problem. What are the inputs? Well, we know we have to put in the amount of tickets needed and the classification of the, the ticket, whether it be business or economy. Outputs, we would expect a total cost for that particular customer. And also, we would expect a grand total, which will be printed once all of the customers have entered their sales. What loops are required? Well, we know we're going to have to continually repeat the program until the amount of customers entered is zero. What if statements will be needed? Well, we need to know whether we are selling a business or economy ticket, and that will have to be examined so we can determine the cost of that ticket. What maths or processes are going to be involved in this program? We need to know the mathematics, which will be the number of tickets multiplied by the classification of the ticket. Is there any file handling involved in this? There is no insinuation in this text that the user is asking us to save any of the details of the program running. So file handling is not applicable in this situation. So let's now look at our pseudocode solution. The total money received is set to zero because we haven't sold any tickets yet. We then ask how many passengers are in the first customer's purchase. If that number is greater than zero, the user will be asked to enter the classification of that ticket. Once we've got the classification and the number of passengers, we can now call the function flight cost. We need to send it two parameters, the number of passengers that we've already entered and the ticket classification, which we've already entered. Once we have that information, that information is passed as parameters to the flight cost function. So let's look at the flight cost function which has already been written. So function, flight cost, P for parameter, is the first parameter which receives the number of passengers. P class or parameter class is receiving the, cl the ticket classification. So this is this data here that's been passed as a parameter to this function here. We can now use our if statement which will compare the parameter class with the string business. If there is a match we are going to set the cost at being equal to 400 multiplied by the parameter number of passengers. If this is false, we examine the parameter class for a match against the string economy. If this is true, 
the cost is set to 200 times the parameter number of passengers. Once this calculation has been performed, we can then return cost. So the, the value of return cost will be assigned to the variable customer cost. That customer cost will then be printed out with the string literal customer cost is. It will be added to a running total of total money received. Becomes total money received plus the customer cost. So this is a running total that will add all customer costs as each customer buys more and more tickets. The program will then ask for the next amount of passengers that wish to purchase tickets. So the program will now jump back up to the start of the while loop. If there are no more passengers, the number of zero will be entered. So therefore the while loop will exit and then we'll print the string literal the grand total of sales is and then the total money received variable will be printed. Now let's look at the Python implementation of this algorithm. Copied the code from our pseudocode design into Python and made the Python modifications. So let's just remind ourselves of those modifications. The word function has been replaced with the word def, so we're defining a subprogram. Our subprogram title line ends with a colon. Our if statements also end with a colon, as well as the elif ends in a colon. Our cost is exactly the same for both classifications. Our end ifs have been removed and our return cost remains the same. Our main program, we have a casting of the input, the default input type for Python as a string. So we are casting it to an integer. Our while loop must have a colon on the end of the first line. Our code is all indented within the loop. Again, we have casting for the input of the number of passengers. Now let's see the program in action. Now we can see the program running in Python, in my Python IDE. In this case, I'm using idle, Python idle, which is a free download. So let's put the number of passengers in. Let's say use two passengers. And let's say our first customer chooses to have a business classification of a flight ticket. So it's now printing out the customer cost is 800. It's now asking us to enter the number of passengers. So this is our second customer. Let's say, again, it's two passengers. Let's say it's economy this time. And the cost to this customer is 400 pounds. Enter the number of passengers. Let's say there are no more passengers using the program now. So when we enter zero, the loop will terminate and print the grand total of um, monies taken for that particular instance of sales. So now we can see that this is printing out the grand total of sales is 1200.